Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna work on harvesting the rest of our onions out here in the cut flower garden. I think you can see them behind me there. And then we are gonna start working on harvesting the potatoes, which I think that project is gonna take us into tomorrow because there's a lot. So here we are, here are the onions we're gonna pull today. These are looking so good. The varieties are Walla Walla and Candy. Huge onions, really sweet. They're a high sugar content onion. Um, you can see that not all of these have flopped, which if we look over here, this is what you wanna look for. This means this onion is ready to be harvested. So they get kind of squishy right here and flop over. So the reason I'm harvesting all of these, even though they haven't all flopped over, I think they're all really close. I know I'm not gonna have another chance in the next week at least to get out here and do it. And there are a few more that are trying to bolt because it's still pretty hot. So I think it's better for the onions. It'll be better for their shelf life, their storage life, if I just get them harvested all right now. And there are several, you know, that are ready to go. Holy moly, look at the size of this onion. Jeez, that's beautiful. So we already came out here recently. You'll see some holes, some spots where we harvested out other onions that had already bolted. See these right here. I just saw that and I thought, you know what? Let's just get them out. Let's get them out, get them uh, cured so we can get them in the root cellar. Before we actually pull those though, we have to head behind the barn and I have to prep all the ones that we've already harvested and get those in the root cellar. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process. I did wanna show you the potato row first. So here in the opposite corner of the garden, you can see the potato rows. So we've got four rows here. I planted them about 18 inches apart from one another and they're 60 feet long. So 240 feet of potatoes and they're showing signs of being ready to be harvested. What they'll do is they'll start to yellow, brown, flop over. There are a few plants that show some green still that still look pretty good, but most of them have flopped and they're looking pretty bad. Yeah, look at this. I'm guessing that some of this fresh growth are actually potatoes that they formed that are starting to grow again. Mm hmm I probably should have done this sooner. So I've got multiple varieties in here. I can't even remember. How many did we have? Like seven, eight, nine? There's quite a few. And I wanna keep them separate for storage because some of them will store longer than others. So we'll use up the ones that, that don't have as long of a shelf life first. Uh, but yeah, we'll start in on some of that if we get the onions done this afternoon. We're like mid to late afternoon right now. So it's likely I'll be out here in the morning digging these, which will actually be more pleasant anyway. But that's the goal over the next little bit, just to get those two crops harvested and prepped and ready for storing. Gosh, you know what I've really been enjoying this season? Are these zinnias right here? Next year, I wanna do at least two rows of zinnias leading up to the cut flower shed. We've got our dahlias here, which are just now starting to explode with growth. We've had blooms for a while, but they've stayed on the short side. And I don't know if that's because it stayed cool for so long, or possibly I divide, I mean, I planted single tubers. I think I may have had a little bit more productive growth had I not divided them down to singles, maybe left them in groups of two or three tubers per clump but I was able to give so many tubers away and that was fun. And I think these will look completely different in a week or two, just because of how much growth I've noticed in the last even week, it's crazy. But I think it would be gorgeous to have two rows, like have a really wide band of color leading up to the flower shed. And I've got different varieties here, like there's California giants here and then a whole bunch of just different ones. You can kind of see the clumps. So there's California giant here, this is like a queen lime orange right here. I've got one I need to pull right there. I've got butternut squash coming out like crazy here. And I showed you this recently and I couldn't find any butternut. So I wanna show you what it looks like now. We've got some big butternut squash in here. Look at that. That's huge. There's another one. I can see one over here. They're all over. So, you know, I was gonna head back to the barn and get the first onions we harvested ready and off of that drying table. But I think since we're out here, we'll go ahead and just pull these, put them in the back of the gator. That way we can go behind the barn and we can be in the shade for the rest of this afternoon or at least part of it. Oh, I'm excited about this. So many big ones.
the haul from the other day, minus a few that have already been given away. So you can see that most of them that we harvested earlier had bolted. So this particular bunch will not store as long. So I'm gonna keep them in their own crate with the label on them. So we make sure to either give away or um, use those first. So the process of harvesting and curing onions is really easy. I mean, you pick them, you let them sit out like this for uh, several days, and then you cut the tops off, cut the roots off, just kind of clean them up a bit, and then store them somewhere. They like temperatures between 32 and 50, if you can provide them that. A lot of people will use like the crawl space under their house or a basement. We do have a root cellar, which I'll show you here in a minute. It's full of status still. So hopefully we can carve out some room for these onions, uh, but somewhere 32 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit and roughly like 60 to 70 percent humidity. I think it's more humid in our cellar right now, so I'll have to turn the fan up. Uh, but this process should go pretty quick. And you could leave these out until all the greens have dried up. Oh, the AC unit's turning back on. This is right where the cellar is right here. Sorry if that's loud. You can see that the roots are, well, those roots just came right off. Uh, all dried up the other day when we picked them, they were all still white and fresh. And then some of the onions will have dried down further, like this one right here. So we'll remove the roots. I usually do this with pruners and then we'll cut the top off and just store it as the bulb. And you do want to make sure to store them in some kind of a crate or a tub that breathes. So I have these crates here, which I usually get my fall bulbs in. And let's just run into the cellar. I'll show you a few other things I use to store our harvest in. In fact, I had this sitting out. This has potatoes in it. This is a perfect basket right here. See how that's very breathable. Door to our cellar. See, it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit in there right now and 78% humidity. Oh, I've got a lot of stuff in here. Got some corn to eat down there. Um, I do keep back stock stuff in here as well. So I've got like flour, sugar, rice, status. I still am saving for projects. I need to get these hung somewhere to dry. These are last year's onions. <laughs> So they do, like they're still usable. You just cut the green off and usually they've got like a little green section in the center. You just discard that and use the rest of it. They're just fine. Um, I use baskets like this a lot for onions or potatoes. And then I'll just use other things. There's more crates. There's other baskets right in here. Uh, there are, these are from Gardener Supply right here. These baskets that have the little front where you can like, you know, put garlic and then you can reach and grab the garlic out. This right here is another crate from Gardener's Supply. In fact, this one I've stored root crops in. <laughs> I wonder what they look like from last year. You dig around in there. Probably not so great. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, these are all dried up. We did use a few of them though. So when you store your beets and carrots and things like that, they do best if you store them in like a moist sand and that's where, you know, I haven't moistened this in months. So whatever we had left, which honestly, like I'm not finding that many, like of all the root crops I put in here, there's one, that's not that many. So we'll clean this out when we get ready to store more. And then you guys, I stock a lot of other things in here that we go through the most, a lot of pasta, flour, sugar, I've got bread flour, um, a lot of the tomato sauce and broths and things like that, rice, um, some spices and yeast, some ice cream starters from William Sonoma. I want to make those here pretty soon. Yeah, sunflower seeds. It's been such a fun room to have out here because for those of you who have been watching long enough, you know that this room was like a cubby for junk. Um, like it was already kind of framed in. That's why we decided to go ahead and do it because it was kind of the infrastructure was there already. It's not like we had to build it from complete scratch, but before it like the whole front of it was open and it was just like scrap lumber and it was a pile a heap. You couldn't even get anything out from under it. It was such pain. And there are a lot of different types of onions you can grow, some with a better, better shelf life than these type that have a higher sugar content. We enjoy eating these more, so this is the type that we grow. And as you can see, I mean, more than a year later, we still have onions from last year. While sprouted, they're still okay to use. So I feel like that's pretty good. And I usually do give quite a number of them away right in the beginning. In fact, we have people coming on a consistent basis every week and they get um, potatoes, onions, corn, uh, things like that. So let me just show you on this one what I'm gonna be doing to all the rest of them. So you can use your pruners or just pop off the roots right there. You can brush off any extra soil if you want to. And then I've got my pruners here. We're just gonna cut the stalk like that. And then we will stack them right in our crates. I'm gonna go get myself a pop-up bag for all of the tops and then we're gonna get this done and then lay out all of our new onions to dry.
in this crate we have 37.7 pounds, 40.2 pounds. I did weigh an, an empty crate so that I could get a total amount of pounds without the weight of the crate. And we're just over 70 today. I'm really happy with that. I think that's really great, especially because we don't have a weight on the uh, ones we harvested today. We'll wait until they dry down and we'll weigh them without the tops on them because that would be cheating. Um, also, I've probably harvested between, I don't know, probably a dozen of them uh, to use inside in my own cooking. And then we've given away a few bags of them already as well. So that's awesome. So here's what I'm gonna do today with these. I'm not gonna actually pop them in the root cellar quite yet. I'm gonna let them sit out. Here's cheddar. I'm gonna let them sit out for just another day or two because when you cut a onion that has a bolted, like a stem coming up through the middle, because that's what happens. They create this hard stem right here. They kind of produce this milk unless they're completely dried out, but it just doesn't happen with bolted onions. And that's why their storage life isn't as good. So I'm going to let the tops dry a bit. Some of them are good though, like this right here. And that's what will happen with our other ones. They'll dry down and almost kind of like seal themselves off. That way they're not open to, you know, deteriorating faster. So I'm just gonna let them set out just a couple more days just to have the tops dry. Then we'll pop them in the root cellar and they will, they'll store for a little while, but I'm just gonna put a note in them that just says to take from these crates first. And that way we shouldn't run into any issues. Isn't that a gorgeous onion though? I mean, as onions go, these are just phenomenal. Also, if I put those onions, the fresh cut ones in the root cellar today without letting them dry a bit more, they would stink up that root cellar so fast. I don't really want that. So our table is now empty, which is so handy. This is one of our nursery tables. So we put extra plants that we have for projects. We just don't have any plants to put on it right now, uh, but it's perfect for drying onions because of all the airflow. And it's a nice shady spot back here. So I've got it kind of like teetering on top of a cart right now. I had to shift stuff around today because I almost lost the onions on one end. I forgot about the weight distribution. Gorilla carts are useful for more than hauling, that's for sure. I think that's, that's even. Okay, here we go. And there they are. They barely fit on this table. I think this batch was a lot bigger than the last batch in terms of like just bulb size. Now I do have one little section all by itself over here. These four had started to bolt, like this is a bloom stock right here. And then this one has a bloom. So these will be added to our already bolted crate section in the root cellar. And these will be the ones that will store the longest. I'm just always so amazed at the size, the sheer size of this crop. And you know, onions are one of those things in our area, especially because we grow a ton of onions. I think there's a big poster board on the side of one of the barns around here that says that our valley produces like 1 billion pounds a year. I think that's what it says. I don't know. It's a lot. Um, so they're easy and they're inexpensive to come by, but this is such an easy crop to grow. It's just so easy to grow yourself. They are a heavy feeder, but I find that so long as you amend the soil when you plant, which I use Biotone Starter Fertilizer and the Land and Sea Compost, that's all the food that I give them. And they still size up this beautifully. Now this variety naturally sizes up bigger, so that could be um, something to consider as well if you wanna grow some nice big sweet onions, walla wallas and uh, uh, candies are fantastic. I think I'm getting bit by mosquitoes out here. One kind of fun thing about this area behind the barn, like I don't know if you've seen it in the background, you probably have, but it's pretty, uh, unorganized at the moment. So, you know, back garden right here. And then this has just become kind of our storage area and our neighbor's storage area as well on the other side. We're gonna actually build on just a little overhang. Off the back side of the barn, we're going to organize and move a lot of this stuff out so that we can park gators and stuff back here, I think. Just open it up and clean it up and then have somewhere under cover. Like all of our firewood is back here too. And right now we just have tarps covering it but it will soon be undercover all on its own. So I think that will be just super handy back here. All right guys, so we're gonna head back out to the garden and start digging potatoes. I don't think I'll get all that many harvested this afternoon uh, because I've got about 45 minutes before I wanna get dinner started. So we'll pick the project up again in the morning and hopefully finish up.
guys, day two of potato harvest. We got about two thirds of them dug yesterday, which is so awesome. So we don't have that much to finish up this morning, but I wanna show you where we're at in terms of potatoes. It's pretty amazing. Look at all of these potatoes. So five different varieties right here. We've got the huckleberry golds. So they have the purple skin. Once they're cleaned up, they look so pretty, but they've got a yellow interior. We've got red Pontiacs. So you can see two crates of those. German Butterballs, which are a russet type, red Lesotas, and russet Burbanks. Look at the size of some of these. <laughs> it's nuts. Okay, let's head back out. all done with the digging part. And I sure made a mess of this area. So I'm gonna have to come back through and pick up all of the piles right here. And then we'll kind of rake up and pull the drip tape straight. And then we can plant something else this fall. We still have time. And here's this morning's harvest. Isn't that crazy? So how many varieties do we end up with today? Four. So we've got purple Vikings right here. There's three baskets of them. And boy, they were even heavy when I didn't have a, an entirely full basket. Some of these are just like, my word, we've got Yukon Golds right here. I did damage just a couple of tubers. See how that one, I accidentally put the digging fork right through it. So we'll eat that one right away. We've got Kennebex right here. And then we've got Purple Majesties here and here. We'll link the couple of videos down below when I prepped the potatoes and then when I planted them because I did talk a little bit more about each one of these varieties and what the maturity day is of them and all of that business. Uh, today was just about getting them out of the ground. I'm gonna take these to the barn. We're gonna get some weights on all of them so we can see roughly how many potatoes in pounds we uh, harvested this year. And then I'm going to lay them out or let them sit out for a few days to dry. And I think the area where we just harvested these from, if we were just to clean it up and turn the water on, I think we'd probably have another potato patch grow right there because it's inevitable. No matter how hard I try to get every single potato, there's usually some little itty bitty ones left that will still grow. I just love getting in there. Like I attempted in the very beginning to wear gloves because I thought, well, this is a lot of potatoes you know, maybe save my hands and use gloves, but I got like two plants in and I thought, nope, don't like this. I like to feel that soil and I can feel the potatoes in there. And I just like put both hands in there as a sifter almost and sift the potatoes out. And I never ever get tired of harvesting potatoes. Just, it's hard physically, uh, but I could just do it all day long. I love it. So let's head back to the barn. Six hundred and fifty two pounds of potatoes. Look at all of those. Holy moly. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so many. So here are all the weights starting with Purple Majesty up here down to Purple Viking. I added in 20 for all of the other potatoes we've already harvested. And that's a conservative number because we already harvested the Red New Orleans from our three by six raised bed earlier on. I know we got more than 20 pounds out of that bed. I did not weigh them though. And then um, I have harvested quite a number of plants out in the big garden as well, kind of along the way, probably Oh, I don't know. I could probably say that I've harvested about 40 pounds ish, but we're going to go with 20. I also weighed the crates and the baskets separately. So my total weight was 688.3. And then these are the crates. I had six baskets at 2.3 pounds a piece, six crates at 3.5 pounds a piece, and then one that wood little crate right there, super lightweight. It's one and a half pounds. So 
that's what brought me to my total of 652. So what I'm gonna do at this point is let these potatoes sit in the barn for a few days. It's out of the sun, it's well ventilated, you know, we always have the big door open, and so um, there's lots of air in here, and then I'll take one variety at a time and spread it out in a single layer. I don't have enough floor space to do them all at the same time, but that will help me keep all the varieties separate anyway. So they'll each get their turn to be spread out. That way each potato has airflow all the way around it. They'll have a chance to dry any excess soil that might have a little moisture still in it. Um, uh, we'll have a chance to dry and then we can kind of brush that off. I don't know if you can hear that. They're working on the brick pathway up there by the house. I think they're using the compactor. If you don't let your potatoes dry and make sure that the skin has dried or healed, that's another word for it, uh, they can rot a lot quicker in storage because any extra moisture, I mean, moisture is our enemy in storage, so your shelf life just goes way down. So let's take a look at one of these purple Viking potatoes. If you can take your thumb and rough up any of the skin, which I can't on this one, that means it's probably dry enough for storage, which is awesome. But then we wanna make sure any soil that's on them is dry enough as well. So it's still a good idea to let them set out so that that soil is completely dry. I noticed like on this one right here, if I scrape with my thumb, this one is not cured enough to store. You can eat them right away. They call these new potatoes, uh, freshly harvested potatoes. Uh, but if they have a skin that will do that under a little bit of pressure, they just won't store as long. Once they've all dried, they'll end up back in these crates and in the root cellar. I've got a handy chart in the root cellar that's just kind of like a quick guide on a bunch of different kinds of crops with uh, listing out what kind of temperature and humidity they like because there's no way I can remember all of this so like uh, we already talked about onions they like 32 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit with 60 to 70 percent humidity let's find potatoes on here uh, where are they at potatoes like 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit 60 to 70 percent humidity. And since I'm using this root cellar for several different types of crops, I have to try to find kind of a happy medium. Usually that's right around 45. It usually, like I'll see it anywhere from 42 to 52-ish. It doesn't usually get much colder than that. In the winter time, I do run a little floor heater um, that will kick on if it gets close to freezing. Um, that way it kind of keeps the ambient temperature in there right about where I need it. It's trial and error too. You know, I didn't expect to be really good at the root cellar thing for a few years because it's gonna take trying it a few different winter seasons to see what kind of temperature and humidity does it best for everything. But this I am super happy with. This is just beautiful. We will keep a lot of these because we do use a lot of potatoes, but a lot of them I'll give away as well. That would be kind of impressive if we could eat 652 pounds of potatoes in a year. And you guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Super happy to have that harvest done. It's always a fun one though. And these two crops are probably two of the easiest crops we grow because like I said, we amend and fertilize at planting and then we just water it. And they're all watered by drip systems, so I don't even have to hand water. Uh, I don't usually fertilize either of those crops along the way, and then we just wait till they're ready to harvest. I mean, that's pretty simple. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.